Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and if you'd like to help us design our new website, I invite you to visit twit.to slash navtest. We've got eight quick questions we'd like to ask you that will help us make the navigation easier to use. That's twit.to slash navtest. Thanks a lot. This is Android App Arena episode 25 for Wednesday, December 10th, 2014, Cord Cutting. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Today's episode is the direct result of input from you guys. All three apps featured today were sent in by fans of the show wanting an episode that focuses on cord cutting. That's video content consumption in a lean back experience that doesn't rely on cable or satellite. In essence, this means that all three picks are perfect for the living room if you don't wanna keep your eyes locked to your phone or your tablet. And if I was to do an episode on cutting the cord, I, I wanted to feature apps and services outside the usual suspects. So you're not gonna find Netflix or YouTube or Hulu on this episode, that kind of feels like cheating. These three apps, I'll take a different approach to enabling you, you couch potato, uh, to recline in your lazy boy and just, you know, watch endlessly streamed content uh, before your eyes. So let's take a look at three apps that facilitate this kind of cutting the cord in this week's roundup. First up is a service brought to you by the fine folks at StumbleUpon. That's a web service and discovery engine that basically makes surfing the web a lean back experience. Their video app is called Five By, and it aims to take the same approach with online video pulled from YouTube. If you're stumped for something good to watch, Five By can help by creating playlists tailored to your mood or the time of day. Similar to what we saw recently when Google's own Play Music subscription service added songs of support that did the same type of thing with music. All right, enough service comparisons. Let's take a look at Five By in action. After logging in, an optional scan of your contacts list matches you up with your friends also using the service, though personally, I didn't have a lot of luck with that aspect. However, going to Find Videos gives you a nice menu of different types of video playlists to choose from, with options like Killin' Time, that's illustrated with a cartoony image of a toilet for whatever that's worth. Also, Funny, there's In the News, Happy Feels, and many more moods. You can actually click to browse all of the channels down at the bottom and prepare to be overwhelmed with options, but go ahead and star any categories that you know you'll return to repeatedly. Now tap into a category and then sit back and let the playlist take control. These YouTube videos play inside Five by in a continuous stream and rotating the device into landscape expands the video to fit the screen. You can also send the app to your Chromecast and lean back in your living room. You know where we are? You tell her, Jen. Disneyland. If you like a video, tap the face with hearts as eyes. <laughs> Don't like it, you can hit that dissatisfied face. These controls actually help shape future playlists for you dynamically. You can also star any video you like to add it to your favorites list. And finally, inside the player, swiping left or right will skip to another video in the playlist. Here's the thing about Five By. YouTube is a vast resource of endless entertainment, but sometimes knowing what to watch makes navigating it kind of daunting. That's why Five By exists. It takes the decision-making process out of your hands, presenting you with an endless stream of stuff to watch when you're at your laziest. Check out Five By. That's the number five B-Y in the Play Store for free. If news is your cup of tea, then you definitely should check out Haystack TV. It's a social video service that focuses on news content of all types and sources. Scanning through Haystack TV, you'll encounter a number of timely and very current videos from all kinds of sources, from internet news sources like CNET, Mashable, The Verge, 
all the way to the big networks like CBS, Fox, CNN, and more. My Headlines is your starting point, and it aims to give you a nice long playlist of the top news content of the moment. If you want to tailor your headlines list, you can modify the headlines here and select the categories you want to appear there. One way to get more content that fits your personal interests is to tap this star to add hashtags to your favorites list. Over time, these favorites factor into the headlines that are presented to you when you refresh the app. Hashtags are also auto-populated at the bottom of the player as videos play back, so you can add new ones to your favorites on the fly by tapping the star next to the term. Now, Headlines is just one place to go. You can pull out the sidebar, and you have all the categories currently offered from science and technology to sports to entertainment news and video game news. Tapping into any category will take you to the playback screen with a healthy list of videos below it, and each video in the list tells you when it was posted. So in essence, you get very current news in a chosen category, which is kind of important when it comes to news content. And finally, the movie trailers section is actually a little bit more than that. You'll also find videos about the making of films intermixed with full movie previews of upcoming theatrical releases. And of course, Haystack TV offers full Chromecast support and on top of that, Haystack is a launch partner with Android TV, so your Nexus player has some company. News junkies have a great resource in Haystack TV, which can be found for free in the Play Store. And finally, there's Show You, which in some ways is kind of a combo of both previous apps I've shown off. Show You allows you to sync up your social media accounts to feature the videos that are shared by your friends and contacts within those services, including Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, and Tumblr. Congratulations, you now don't have to log into Facebook if you ever wanted to only see the videos your friends were sharing. Okay, maybe that's a bit extreme. That certainly isn't the extent of Show You, but it's a neat way to cut out some of the clutter and get right to the videos that your contacts find important on other social networks. Show You has what it calls grids, which are essentially video streams of particular categories. Home, the default grid, shows you a combination of all the sources that you've plugged in to show you, as well as things that you've marked inside other services. The home feed and following feeds include content from your social networks, but also any other content channels that you've added from inside show you. This can be done by going to a category at the bottom of the slide out pane where you'll find a ton of categories to choose from. Just tap on one and a number of sources appear for your selective inclusion. Adding these creates a nice list of your favorite channels in that sidebar, making it easy to come back to them later. Tap into a video to start playback, and yes, swiping in the player will skip forward or backwards through the playlist. You can mark any video for watching later, and that will move it to the Watch Later playlist so that whenever later happens, you can play the first video and let the entire playlist stream in its entirety. Or heck, send it to your TV and kick back thanks to the Chromecast support. Show you has a nice polish to it and feels a bit more like the kind of service that you use when you know and love particular content creators. You can find Show You in the Play Store for free. Now, I specifically called this block a roundup as opposed to best of the best, which was my initial intention, because let's face it, when it comes to video content consumption, the more options we have, the better. And each service really does tackle a different approach. So it really didn't feel right anointing one of these as the absolute best of the best. I will say, however, that Haystack TV's Android uh, TV integration really got me jonesing for more apps like it in the current, some, uh, currently somewhat sparse Android TV landscape. Haystack has done uh, the work to integrate its content into Android TV's voice search capabilities and its suggested content, which is pretty neat. That's a glimpse into the potential power of Android TV as it continues to mature and evolve, not to mention as better hardware options appear, because currently the Nexus Player is the only consumer option. And as I discussed in my review on yesterday's episode of Before You Buy, the Nexus Player has a lot of rough edges, but the promise of the platform is exciting and apps like these definitely have a home there. Okay, up next is an app that is designed to help you get the most out of your device, though sadly, there are some limitations. Let's jump right in and take a look at this week's Hot to Trot. 
This week's hot app is actually brought to us by this company. You may have heard of them. I don't know. Um, Google, I think, is the name. Anyways, Google is historically not the best when it comes to selling products, and many people have had issues with its support online. Google just released a new app, thankfully, that is designed to bring direct support to users of Nexus, Google Play Edition, and Android One devices. It's called Device Assist. And I have to applaud Google for what they're attempting to do here with the app. The obvious downside is that an app like this isn't made available to all users of Android, but you know that's outside of Google's hands. These devices are the ones Google has any direct control over. Now, Device Assist is a way to monitor the health of your device as the app scans through your settings and points out what it determines as possible tweaks and changes that can be made to get the most out of your hardware. First, Detected issues is where the Device Assist app will surface these suggestions after scanning your phone or tablet when you launch the app. So, for example, if I have my brightness set to maximum, I'll get a little tip that informs me about what adaptive brightness is inside Lollipop and a quick way to activate that setting to save battery long term. Then there's the Tips tab, which surfaces a number of general tips that any Android user can benefit from because, let's face it, oftentimes some of the coolest stuff that Android does takes some trial and error to discover. And a lot of these tips hinge on new functionality inside Lollipop, the latest version of Android. So getting acquainted with this new world is made just a bit easier thanks to Device Assist. And finally, and this is a biggie, in both tabs at the bottom is this huge support button asking if you're looking for help. Tapping this actually takes you through the process of sending your specific device information to Google and requesting a callback from a live customer support representative 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I actually tried this feature out live on last week's episode of This Week in Google, episode 278, and they called back within one minute, ready to field my support questions. Looks like you set up a call with our new device assist app. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm hoping someday the app will get full video support, possibly through Hangouts uh, capabilities, similar to what Amazon has with their Mayday service on Fire devices. Google is taking a bigger step to supporting their family of devices, and they are absolutely on the right track. If you have a supported device, I highly encourage you install Device Assist for free through the Play Store. Device Assist is pretty cool, I have to say. I really hope that at some point there's a way for Google to open it up to more devices outside of their, uh, you know, kind of limited library of devices. We'll see if that happens. But nonetheless, it's Google stepping it up on the customer service uh, side of things. I think that's great. I think they needed to do that. All right, that is it. I love hearing from you guys. Please send me your recommendations. They're super helpful to me in planning this show. Uh, as you saw earlier today, the show is built around your recommendations. Uh, if you have your favorite apps, new categories, anything, you can send those to Arena at twit.tv. Also have a subreddit for the show. I post categories there often and ask you to kind of fill me in on what your favorite apps within those categories happen to be and why. If you have ideas for great apps in those categories, you want to check out what other people have suggested, head on over to androidapparena.reddit.com and you can share those with me and others. It's a big help. You can also follow me on Google+, Plus. just search for my name there for my random Android musings. I also host a live viewing party of each week's episode of this show where I'll be on set to answer any questions you might have about the apps in the show or really anything about Android. And that happens every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight at live.twit.tv. And of course, if you miss the live taping, it's okay. Each week's episode will appear later that night on the site and in the feed. And uh, all those details can be found at the show page. That's twit.tv slash arena. That's the important one to remember. If you remember nothing else, it's twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me once again today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena. Arena.